another episode of Horror Movie Night. I'm trapped in Frankenstein's castle. Meanwhile, Adam is just running around with Bruce Campbell hanging out in some type of haunted house. And finally, Scott's in the basement talking to ravens. I don't know what's going on because we just watched Waxwork 2, Lost in Time. I'm really Uh, disappointed you didn't do your rap. Your monster rap, bro. (laughs) I don't know the rap from this movie. I know... One line from the Monster Squad. Rap. But here's here's <laughs> what I think is that like we've done this, we've talked about. Okay, so the 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 wizard behind the curtain for everybody is that like we thought we'd already discussed this movie because <laughs> we've talked about this movie so many times in the last six months. We've talked about the rap. That's all we've ever talked about. Are you are you serious? Yeah. Like I I swear we've had full conversations about this film on horror movie night. <laughs> I don't know. So this is actually, so this is not cool, but this is kind of cool, is that this is episode 30, and it's the first time that we're talking about a sequel to a movie that we previously watched, which was actually our second episode of Waxwork. So I just thought that was interesting. That it's not, I don't know, there's no no significance to that Dude, whatsoever. if you want me to pick a bunch of movies that are all in the same franchise, I can do that. Oh, no. We've talked about a plan this summer, which I still want to happen. Yeah, so, I agree. So, so Waxwork 2. We're all going to go skinny dipping at the old swimming hole. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that's, that was for just us. You guys weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> so Waxwork 2 so dramatically changes the tone of the previous film like pretty quickly. Like, like within the first five minutes, it is a completely different film. But it does start off right where the first one left off with the hand crawling from the burning Waxwork and then murdering Sarah's evil stepfather and framing her for it. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I have to say something. Did you realize that the TGRI guy, whatever spell the TGRI guy used in the first movie to, to create the wax work, it, it, it like dissipated when he died, when he took his milk bath. <laughs> and then Deborah Foreman transformed back into Monica Schnarr. I had to look up her name, but like that... Whatever power TGRI guy had, like that made Deborah Foreman be like, you know, I don't really want to come back for the sequel. Yeah, I don't blame her. <laughs> uh, man, I would have loved to have seen her in this. I mean, it would have. It, it was just. It's too weird that this movie starts where Waxwork ends, but then they've got a different female lead. Because I mean, this movie is equally carried by the male and female leads and the fact that one of them is different is just odd i mean this movie is odd all around it's a fun watch this but it's odd this is definitely stranger than the first movie by like a long shot well the thing is that this movie is definitely more comedy than horror yeah it's very slapsticky whereas like the first movie i think there were a lot of comedic elements to it but it i mean at least when i first saw it when I was, I mean, and I went through that whole story when we when we discussed the original. But when I first watched it, I was scared by it. It was it was creepy and it was like pretty graphic. And we talked about that whole part where the vampire scene in the white the white room is it, it had to be censored a bunch because it was going to be like the bloodiest scene in cinema at the time. Mm, the the sauce makes the dish. The dish. Mm. Yes, steak ta ta. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Charles. Charles? Yes, your fiance. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're in a castle. There's a lot of vampires around. <laughs> oh, thanks, Charles. I didn't know what was happening. Let me fall on your leg four times in succession. Ah! <laughs> well, there's a rat on my leg. <laughs> Well, like, the logic in this movie, though, from, like, the start is more absurd to me. Because you've got, like, Sarah's on trial for murdering her stepfather. And she's using the uh, the undead severed ham, hand did it defense. A uh, very popular defense, but it very rarely works. So they hey. decide that they have to get evidence for her story that this evil waxwork actually isn't a made-up story. So they find this compass that allows them to travel through time. And this is pretty much where it immediately goes off the rails because they go through time. Wait, 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 wait. Rewind. You're saying that the shit goes off the rails when they find a time-traveling stopwatch and not the fact that she was going to jail for life for her stepfather being killed by a disembodied hand. 
did they not check for prints on the hammer that bashed your dad's face in? I mean, this is some making a murderer level police work that like they just fucked it up. Did, I mean, seriously, oh, Scott, Scott, you're so topical. Uh. <laughs> I can't help but that Megan is obsessed with making a murderer. Well, anyway, immediately hey, upon hey, entry- hey, we, this is another week in a row that we got some major Evil Dead homages. Oh, so let me, I want to get to that in a second. So so immediately Mark jumps through this time portal and he loses Sarah to this weird bat demon creature straight out of house. <laughs> Which is straight out of Army of Darkness. <laughs> uh, and then he has a vision of him going back inside his mother's womb, which is so fucking weird because she's like, <laughs> come back home, Mark. Come back home. And she's like grabbing her crotch. And, like, little boy Mark just runs into her crutch, and then there's just a shot of a fetus. And that's never fucking brought up again. That's just, like, a thing that happens. Yeah, and then it's, like, <laughs> smash cut to we're in Frankenstein world. Like, oh, you know, I think that they the were, fuck? like, they they filmed that, and then they were, they kind of, like, had the shame face, and they just couldn't look each other in the eyes. We're like, I guess we spent money on that. We better keep it in the film, but uh, we're not revisiting. No, no, no. Sorry. Wouldn't it be funny if this was like that alternate ending to uh, Butterfly Effect? That's what I was going to say. Instead... I felt like I was watching Butterfly Effect. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mark hung himself with his own umbilical cord and the movie ended right there. <laughs> <laughs> but instead we end up in Victor Frankenstein's house. Well, you know what? When he gets to that, uh, the, when I like the fact that um, once again – when they go into the different scenes, they have different hairstyles because, I mean, I really like Sarah's hair in the Frankenstein, like that, that, um, the flapper haircut, flapper haircut Sarah is like definitely best looking Sarah in the film. But, um, that mustache is just not working for Mark no, at all. No. So they end up at Victor Frankenstein's house. Sarah is Elizabeth and she believes that she's Elizabeth until Mark is just like, yo, I'm Mark. And then she's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm Sarah. Like, there's not a lot of convincing that takes place for her to it's suddenly. It's me, Charles. Do- <laughs> <laughs> <Your fiance. laughs> Mark decides that all they need for evidence is they just need to steal Frankenstein's book on how to reanimate flesh. And then they need to reanimate a dead body. And then they have their evidence. So are they trying to say that the TGRI guy used Frankenstein's book to, like, make the the spell that created the waxwork characters in the first movie? Because that's some really spurious logic right there. No, I think literally their logic in this is that if they can prove that they can bring a, a dead hand back to life, then, then obviously that hand is capable of killing Sarah's stepfather. They want to try to reanimate the dead and prove their innocence. And Wait, then- if this, is, this is so stupid that they're like, oh, shit, we got trapped in, like, back in time. Hey, while we're here, let's look for evidence to clear you on that trial. In Instead the of just <laughs> like- fighting in time. Oh, oh, my God! Why did that not come... Like, that that did not even cross my mind. Again, I will get to that, because I have a note for that, too, later on. So here's the problem. So I watched this yesterday while I was working from home due to the snowstorm. This is not a movie to watch while you're working from home because it is fucking complicated as hell and keeps jumping all over the goddamn place. So I would, like, look back at my computer to, to work on, a, on an email that came in, and then I'd be like, oh, wait, well, now we're in a haunted house? When did that happen? So, like, my notes are a little scattered. So I'm, I'm hoping Scott can keep me, uh, Scott or Adam can keep me on track here. But they end up at a haunted house story with Bruce. No, Campbell. you missed one. You missed it. They go from Frankenstein to Alien. No, they don't, because because they he what? shows up and Bruce Campbell's like, "Hey, man, great to be on this quest with you or whatever." And then Mark's like, "Well, where the fuck, Sarah?" And then it goes to oh, Alien. And I was God so damn, confused because I looked yeah. away from the screen for like a second, and they were in Alien, which raised the question: Are they going through time, or are they just trapped in the great movie ride in Disney World? <laughs> <laughs> also, they must have spent all of their budget on that alien sequence. But they also spent all their power not trying trying to not show us the alien for more than a couple seconds in the beginning of that. Because I'm pretty sure there was a point where we saw the creature in Jug Face more than we saw this fucking alien. <laughs> like, it just kept cutting to like, hey, here's its shoulder. Here's, its, here's a part of its face. That being said, the head decapitation slash head slam is fucking gnarly as all hell. 
Two yeah. episodes in a row where the highlight is something involving a head being smashed. Remember when we did the first waxwork discussion, I did a tally of how many exploding heads were in that film. Wasn't that the movie that I did that? Yep. Pretty sure. That was like eight or nine exploding heads. Yeah, they, they uh, really do love crushing their heads in these this franchise. Plus, the, the, the bat gets its head blown off in, the, <laughs> in, in Waxwork 1. But the best portion of this whole film has to be Bruce Campbell in The Haunting because it's like he, he's, he's, his chest is flayed open. He's like, they, he accidentally throws vinegar on it. And Bruce Campbell's like, ah! And then accidentally throws salt on it. Ah! Evil Dead, salt and vinegar chips. Oh, my God. Well, that's, well, that's what my issue is. Is if you check Wikipedia for reference, it says that that sequence is only a reference to the haunting. But the way that the demons talk and the comedic elements of it, it's definitely an homage to to, to Evil Dead. Evil Dead too. Like yeah. like one hundred and ten percent. It just happens to be in black and white. So we're like, no, it's the haunting. Then they end up. Now again, I may have missed something because it's very easy to miss shit in this movie. They end up in like a Robin Hood type sequence, right? Oh, uh, which is the worst. Wait, wait, wait. They they do go back. They call back to the alien sequence first. Okay. Um, and the, yeah, yeah. the the like Ripley character gets a face hugger, and then Mark axes her right in the face, and somehow <laughs> only kills the face hugger, but not the Ripley character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. It's awesome. So we, we, I guess that would cons- you could consider that another head explode because it's almost head explosion. What the best way to end this film would have been is if the face hugger would have implanted an egg in Sarah, and then at the end they're like, "Oh, we're safe," and then woo, chest burster. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my big note that that shatters my brain while watching this movie. What the fuck is up with the soundtrack during this Robin Hood sequence? Because it's like 90s techno, but this movie's from like 88. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. It sounds like the prodigy came in to do the soundtrack for this Robin Hood sequence. Well, I hate to break it to you, Matt, but Kraftwerk was doing that shit in about 1980 or 1979. So, I mean, techno was a thing in the 80s. No, no, no. I get that, I get that there was 80s techno. And like I get that Kraftwerk was there, like do 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 do. No, no, techno was not a thing until Sandstorm happened. Yes. I just want to talk about how I've been listening to a whole lot of Daft Punk lately, and I was never really into Daft Punk that much. Fucking love them now. So I feel like all of all the music that you're starting that you're like getting into from your job is making me want to tell you to quit your job. <laughs> uh, you know what? I used to I used to watch some music videos for Daft Punk when I was little and I wasn't even all that into the music, but I was like, I don't know, it's cartoons, it's something to watch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were gonna talk about the really fucking weird Daft Punk videos, like the one where it's a like- Dog headed man with a broken leg that's, just wandering. Is that Twins? No, that's that's Daft Punk. It's a Spike yeah. Jones directed Daft Punk video where the song it's is literally fucking... in the background the whole fu- like the song's not even the focal point of the video. <laughs> it's just a dog headed guy with a broken leg walking around the streets of New York just having conversations with people while a Daft Punk song plays in the distance. Yeah, it's Scruff McGruff taking a bite out of crime or some shit. I yeah, fucking know. Nah, Daft Punk Anyways. always have weird videos. As did uh yeah Apex Twins had some fucking weird shit. They're like peeling off right now. We don't even give a shit about Waxwork Two. Let's no, we're just like dudes that were in the movie don't give a shit about Waxwork Two. How am I supposed to care about it? <laughs> well, there is a pretty gnarly vampire sort of transformation that kind of happens. I don't know what that is. It's, it's cool. A, it's a, no, it's a, a panther. It's not a vampire. I don't know what it is. It's just the panther transformation. Yeah. That part's kind of cool. Here's my biggest, my biggest gripe with this film. Well, with Waxwork as a whole, really, is that they pick the shittiest antagonists. Like, the Marquis is the worst antagonist to pick for Waxwork. Sir Wilfred is the worst antagonist to pick for this film. No one cares. That why, they, and I feel like they're picking these, like, sadistic humans because they're trying to make some sort of parallel between the the films and like show the good versus evil or something but they suck like waxwork is one of my favorite horror movies i'm not criticizing waxwork as a whole like the first film 
I just think that the the marquee is the absolute lowest point of that film, and it sucks that he got the most screen time. Sir Wilfred gets the most screen time in this movie, and he's crap. It, it makes no sense, and it, it drags down the movie. It slows the pace. Why is there a, 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 a fencing scene? You know, like, it just takes the... It takes the zany, like, off-the-wall business and just kills the fun. Yeah? No? <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> no, Sorry, you're, guys, you're not wrong. You're absolutely fucking right. And, I mean, like, I, we discussed it when we talked about Waxwork. Like, Marquis was the worst possible character. And then there's, like, a scene in this where, again, she's, like, attached to a, a post and she's getting flogged and it's, like, why are we repeating the sins of the past here? Like, what the fuck is going on? Also, why is David Carradine in this fucking movie? He's in everything. That's what I told you last week. He was in. He's in Stung. Uh, after I finished Stung on Netflix, Harbinger Down came on as like a you might like. So I, of course, I added it to my watch list. But like David Carradine is in so much stuff. Like I looked at his IMDb, and that dude is older than dirt. And works more than anybody. You're you're referring to him in the present tense. Yeah. And I have some bad news for you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he died? When? Like five oh years ago. You never no, heard no, no, of no, no, Wait, no. you didn't know David, about this? Oh, David, oh, oh shit, my God. Shit, shit, let me shit. tell him. I confused myself. David, Car- David Carradine got confused with... No, Lance. he didn't get anything. He's dead. He didn't get confused. You got confused. I'm sorry, dude. No, 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 no. Listen, <laughs> I confused him with Lan- Lance Henriksen. Well, yeah, I, I, that's understandable. Because <laughs> Lance Henriksen is also wore, in fucking everything. Yeah, he's in. A, he's in Harbinger Down and Stung, but he looks Here, he, old as piss now. By the way, wait, are we not? Was, was David Carradine not even in these movies? No, that he was talking about <laughs> was Westworld too. Oh my god. Oh this is my god. all over this again. Is Johnny Depp all over again. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, no, David Carradine was Frankenstein from Death Wish 2000. Yes. Death and he was Kill he was Bill and Kill Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he yeah. died from autoerotic Auto-erotic asphyxiation. asphyxiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which can I can I talk on... about let's let's talk about this for a quick second because this I don't want to talk about your fetishes man. has always been super interesting to me is I remember I was in college when it was announced that David Carradine had been found dead and everyone thought that it was a suicide and everyone's like oh my god that's horrible like David Carradine like I can't imagine him being, him being so sad that he would hang himself and then it was like well now we think it's autoerotic fixation everyone's just like okay well that makes sense can I can I be honest can I be honest best way to go really <laughs> the first time i died it was awesome i don't know what you're trying to say here adam he's saying that that's his preferred method of going out if he's gonna go out he's gonna be coming when he's going <laughs> it's that or whorehouse heart attack when i'm old i don't know <laughs> uh, well, found our band name <laughs> whorehouse heart attack <laughs> so Mark is told by a raven that he is a time warrior. Oh, stupidest, stupidest idea. Yeah. This uh, is... Also, super topical because Legends of Tomorrow comes out this week, which is uh, the the time time warrior is the like that's the whole Vandal Savage and and Rip Hunter those those comic book characters. I'm pretty sure they're called Time Warriors. I'm not no, actually you don't familiar. Shit at all. Yeah, I'm uh, not familiar. I'm not familiar with that comic book series. I didn't even know what that movie was. <laughs> it's a TV show. Gotcha. It's uh, characters from Flash and Arrow. Um, gotcha. Yeah, stuck in time. Gotcha. Eventually, uh, Sarah takes a reanimated. I-, I just kind of gave up writing notes for this movie, and I just came to eventually. Sarah takes a reanimated hand back to reality, and is found not guilty. And then here's where my issue is. So then she shows that she also has a compass, and she's going to go and return to Mark. Then why did she even come back to the present? Like, if her plan is just like, well, I'm just going to gallivant through time with Mark for all eternity, then why even come and clear your name? No, no, no. She wanted to clear her name, and then she wanted to get – she wanted to go back, find him in time, and bring him back to the present. 
Because that's a good idea. Why wouldn't you go to the future where there are flying cars and no disease? I think and that probably VR want, sex. I, I mean, think she just wants to have fun jumping through time. Well, you know, girls just want to have fun <laughs> yeah. jumping through time. I, I think she just wants to be the rose to his uh, Doctor Who. You know what I mean? Like, she just wants to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She bops, we bop, everybody bops, whatever. <laughs> 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 you know, here's the thing. She acts like she's in a rough, uh, like a rush to come back and like clear her name. Guess it's what? time. Who you cares? Literally, have all the fucking time in the world to do that. Like, what are you doing? Oh. So I guess that that means that you don't ever die. Like you, you don't have to. So he, or it's one of those like slaughterhouse five type things do you less do you read kurt vonnegut um <laughs> uh but i think like slaughterhouse <laughs> five, i told you it's fucking so easy to quote um <laughs> that one line maybe i can't imagine there being a whole shit ton of disturbing behavior quotes hey, that come hey up guys when you come visit i'm gonna wake you up i'm gonna stand over you and be like do you read kurt vonnegut <laughs> <laughs> You I'm pretty sure to bring a copy of Cat's Cradle with me. So I'll give you like, yes, I do. Yeah, here. <laughs> uh, uh, rats, Here's the rats, thing. The rats. reason the reason she's immortal is because she fought and her spirit was true. And so Toulon put her inside <laughs> of an immortal destroyed bucket. That's the best thing you can do for her. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do. Toulon. Mark, Listen. you're gonna have to stay in the 1800s. That's the best I can do for you, buddy. I'm just... <laughs> so wait. So this is the thing: is maybe you can visit any time in time before your own death. Like that's the whole point of of Slaughterhouse Five: is you get unstuck in time, and you 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 can travel through time wherever you want, but you can't go beyond when you naturally died. So maybe she's like. I got to go find him before he, like, finds his own death. Uh. Uh, I just appreciate that she, like, she has this, like, I'm going to Disneyland type reaction. <laughs> like, she's, like, she's leaving she's leaving the fucking courthouse. And they're like, well, now that your name's been cleared of murder, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going back to get Mark. And then rap song. Like, immediate rap song. Hey, how does that rap song go, Matt? I don't know. This is not a good rap song. <laughs> This is not a good catchy rap song. You at don't all. like good rap at all. Traveling in time and seven hands too. Dracula swimming in the swimming pool. <laughs> I like that you keep saying Dracula swimming in the. It's creature in the swimming pool. Fuck you! It's whatever I say it because, is. Because so here's the whole thing. The Listen, reason, he was uh, hanging out with the Draculas. But from what I understand, from what I understand, the original lyric was. Dracula and the Wolfman 2, Creature from the Black Lagoon, but because they were, like, not legally using the name Creature from the Black Lagoon in that movie, they had to call it the Gill Man because of copyrights, they had to change the lyric from Creature in the Black Lagoon to Creature Swimming in the Swimming Pool, which I think is just makes that lyric even better to me. Oh, uh, I've had it with these monkey-fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday, <laughs> Friday plane. plane. <laughs> Do you see what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps? <laughs> so what did you guys watch this week? One thing I want to tell you guys, I hate you. Um, I, like a stupid asshole, decided to watch Brain Scan. And then, <laughs> who, who decides Wait. to message us and say, guys, I'm going to pick brain scan <laughs> uh some dude he said that he bought it on a four-piece dvd with monster high that movie is really really bad it's yeah, not I'm, like fun. i'm not a fan of brain scan at all i am no, really well, not a fan guess what guys guys don't spoil your reviews for it, we're gonna <laughs> i don't seriously can we can we just call an audible and not watch it, so, it is scott scott really scott. really rapey scott here's my advice because we've got our schedule set up till at least the end of March. And we both know that Adam has a drinking problem. So if we just don't <laughs> if we don't bring it up anymore, he'll forget about it in like a week. <laughs> like, I took this I'm long to brain scan the shit out of you two. Fuck you. If it took this I'm long saying... to get to this film that we've been talking about nonstop for like months, brain scan is never gonna happen. Thank no. God. Because no. that movie sucks. It is like all the worst parts of Trick or Treat 86, 
<laughs> and then Edward Furlong as a creepy perv. So seriously, let's do ourselves a favor and forget it exists. Was there any? Like, so- like you walked into a movie where Eddie Furlong was the main character, and you're like, this might be good. Like, what were you fucking thinking? He wasn't I don't terrible know. in the Night it's of the Demons the remake. Judgment Day. Yeah. So this raises a question, though, because I'm curious. There was like this really popular point in the late '90s, early uh, or, or late '80s, early '90s, where there was these like evil computers possessing people films <laughs> but was there ever a good one <laughs> no 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 I, I promise that no the best the best computer um be possessing someone scene is obviously from monster high because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah even like evil speak with clint howard is also pretty fucking bad and that was like I around the exact same it. time it's Clint Howard, so I mean, it, he got he got a Razzie, right? Yeah, you know, I he used got to, a lifetime you know, lifetime achievement yeah. award. I used to confuse Brain Scan for uh, Altered States. For oh, but Altered States is great. Yeah, well, because the movies were side by side in the sci-fi horror section of the video store I used to work at, and they have kind of similar covers. But anyway, so was Brain Scan the only thing that you suffered through? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's the only thing worth mentioning right now. Adam, bunch of cartoons, I'm assuming? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I didn't really watch anything. Everybody watch Castle Freak. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, I, well, I, I, what I watched, are we? Eight movies? <laughs> it's flop I watched but, yeah. Brain Scan. Whatever. I watched Brain Damage. I watched Brain Dead. <laughs> I watched Evil Brain. Um, Dude, we have yeah. to discuss. Wait, is that what it's called? The it's one? just called the brain, and it's on our list. Don't brain? worry, don't worry, it's coming up. Can that happen <laughs> before your next pick? Because I'd much rather watch that instead of rewatching. Nope, nope. nope. <laughs> my the, my <laughs> next my next pick is the equivalent of me saying I would pick that to you saying you're going to pick Troll Two one day. So I'm finally crossing mine off the list, dude. Okay, well then my next pick has to be Troll Two because. I've te- I've Come been on, a cock- we're watching teeth. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Here's right. my one word review for teeth. Plop. That's it. That's my whole review for teeth. <laughs> All right. So so this week on uh, on Weird Ass Movie Night, we watched a 70s TV movie called Snow Beast about a killer yeti. <laughs> and uh, it's not very good. But, guys, this is important. Next week for Weird Ass Movie Night, I'm finally going to see Killer Workout. Oh, nah, oh my nah. God. So, oh my god! Yeah, one of one of the people who comes every week bought it on Blu-ray, so it's time. It's time to finally see Killer Workout. So I will I be reporting I don't think back you're on ready, that. Man, I seriously don't think that you're ready for that shit. But the, the you're gonna mo- have to you're gonna have to put a pillow on your lap to hide that boner that you're gonna be getting. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna have to put a pillow on my lap because I'm gonna be thinking about your boner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the so the last movie I want to talk about that I that I watched is um I suffered through the new Fantastic Four movie. Why? Uh, because it came into my Netflix. It just appeared there. I still get discs, and I forget that things are added onto my list every once in a while. And then it's just like, oh shit, I gotta watch this now. Oh, they twisted my arm to watch this piece of garbage. <laughs> so. I, I wrote a one-sentence review on, on Facebook, which was that Fantastic Four is a non-start thrill ride. This movie, guys, like neither one of you have seen it, right? I refuse. Okay. Oh, of course not. Okay. Why, why would I? I'm not. My name isn't Matthew Kelly. I'm not about to waste my fucking time. So, so, so the remake of oh, the Fantastic Four film is an hour and 40 minutes long. Good God. How long do you think it takes for them to become the Fantastic Four? I don't know. I've an seen hour, an hour and thirty nine minutes. No, you're close. An hour and fifteen minutes into the movie, they finally become the Fantastic Four. How long do you think it is before we meet the main villain, Doctor Doom? An hour and thirty minutes into the hour and forty minute long movie, it's an hour and fifteen minutes of these obnoxious teenagers palling around about science. So and th- it's exactly like the comic book in the seventies. Uh, it's. So the origin, and then the origins of how, like, Doctor Doom is Doctor Doom is, like, such a fucking slap in the face to everything that the Doctor Doom character represents. Because, like, to me, the Doctor Doom character represents, like, ultimate vanity. Like, he's not even that hideous underneath the mask, but he's so vain that he he cannot accept that he is not perfect anymore type, type element. 
in this movie. I don't think that you are really up to date on what well, Doctor changed, Doom is all about. They changed Doctor Doom a lot. I that's the Doom that right, I, I know that I know um, that. But like in this movie, so it's like all four of them go into like whatever fucking alternate reality they go into to to be transformed, and they fucking leave Doctor Doom there, and then. At the end of the movie, they're like, oh, shit, he's still alive. Let's bring him back. And the suit that he wore has melted into his face. And now he's just trapped in the in the suit that he wore onto that planet. And because of that, he's like, well, then fuck all you guys. You left me there, and I'm going to kill you. And, like, and then they kill him with the ease. They just stop him with at the ease of you know, 10 minutes of action and then credits. It's just a fucking horrendously bad movie. It is probably the worst film of 2015. It's, it's an embarrassment. It's, it's just everything you can say negative about it. It is a bad fucking movie. Good. I'm really glad that you took that bullet for you your guys. Time. Yeah. Yes. I do think the next thing that I'm getting in the mail is goosebumps with a uh, Jack black. So uh, I'm interested to see how that is. Uh, hey, we can talk about that. I saw that in theaters. Yeah, I believe you said that there's what? some implications of ghost sex. Oh, yeah. Well, sure I, I foresee a future discussion on <laughs> the podcast. Hey, everybody, that was us talking about Waxwork 2 Lost in Time from 1992. Holy shit, this movie came out in 1992. That seems wrong. That doesn't seem like the right time that this movie was made. Maybe it was lost in time for a couple of years. Ooh, spooky. Uh, this was picked by listener, a listener named Sarah, who uh, has been listening to us since the very first episode. She messaged us immediately after, watch, after the Waxwork episode to watch Waxwork 2. But uh, for some reason, we and put it, it took off. Us, 20... took us 28 episodes to get here. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> I got no problems with that. I, I didn't want to. I wouldn't want to have done this that closely to the first wax work. Don't forget that you can also, like Sarah, send us suggestions. Just shoot us an email at hmnpodcast at gmail dot com, and we're always doing mailbag episodes. Feel free to shoot us a letter for a mailbag episode. And while you have the time, I know that a lot of you guys listen to us on iTunes. If you want to take a second and send us a uh, rating and review, that's always going to help. The podcast be more visible to people, and the more visible the podcast is, the easier it is for us to get on some cool conventions so that we can maybe come to a city near you, and you guys can see us lambast a movie live. We got to think of some really good ones for if we ever do get a get a convention, like a well-known movie to just just really train wreck for, for an hour. So shoot us your emails, shoot us your thoughts, send us your suggestions at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. Come to Daddy video is one of the scariest things I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> we should just do a horror movie night episode on that video. <laughs> I'm sure we can get 45 minutes out of that. Just, just Dude, the guess, do you want to do you want to do a horror movie night where we discuss us like four or five music videos? Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Like Swins, Come to Daddy, Bush, Greedy Fly. Um, uh, that corn video where they made somebody eat their own shit that one time. Yeah, yeah, and 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 we can get super topical with last, or I think it's only been a year and a half since it came out. But uh, um, Cal decapitation, forced gender reassignment. That is fucked up. Oh, we could watch Push It by Static X too. <laughs> Oh my god! We're not gonna watch any death trip. Let's just listen to that. All. Let's have a whole. Let's have an episode where we uh, just come dissect. Push it. <laughs> come push it. Wait, so we're not? We wouldn't discuss any of the fucking weird like Primus and Tool videos. I feel like we have to work cool. one of them. Oh cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sober. I intend to be pretty drunk for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 